Have you ever wondered why a Boeing 747 seems to magically float just before touchdown, hovering gently above the runway, almost as if it's hesitating to land? Well, that magical moment has a name, ground effect. And while it might seem like a pilot's best friend, it can also turn into a dangerous trap if misunderstood. So stick around because by the end of this video, I'll tell you about a real accident where ground effect played a pivotal role and how we can all learn from it. Plus, we'll go through an 8-bill question from the 8-bill Q database regarding ground effect. So what are we waiting for? And let's get started. Imagine you're watching a 747 come into land, it's descending steadily, her massive wings flexing slightly under her own weight, the engine spooling down, but then, just before touchdown, the aircraft seems to float. The floating sensation isn't just your imagination, it's the aircraft experiencing ground effect. What exactly is a ground effect? Now, in simple terms, ground effect is a phenomenon that occurs when an aircraft is flying at an altitude roughly equal to or less than its wingspan above the ground. So for the Boeing 747, with a wingspan of about 64 meters, that means that effect kicks in when it's flying within 200 feet above the surface. So to understand what's happening here, we need to talk about lift and drag. So when a plane is in cruise flight, air flows over and under the wings, creating pressure difference lower pressure above the wing and high pressure below the wing. Now this difference generates lift, but here's the catch. Some of that high pressure air from beneath the wing tries to sneak around the wing to, to the low pressure area on the top, creating swirling vortices. Now these vortices cause something called induced drag and reduce overall lift. Now this vortex is the beginning of the famous wake turbulence. Now enter the ground. When the aircraft gets close to the ground, within one wingspan, the surface interferes with these vortices. It blocks or traps the swirling air from forming fully. And as a result, the aircraft suddenly experiences less drag and a noticeable increase in lift. That's why the aircraft seems to float or cushion above the runway. Compared this to trying to push a beach ball underwater, naturally it wants to come back up again. Now that added lift makes the plane more buoyant, so to speak, but it can also catch inexperienced pilots off guard. Now let's talk about the pros of ground effect. First off, the increased lift and reduced drag can make takeoffs more efficient. Airlines operating heavy aircraft like the 747 or the AC-50, etc., can benefit from slightly shorter takeoff rolls, especially at sea level airports. Now the aircraft gets airborne a bit sooner, saving wear on the landing gear and reducing the runway distance required. Now this effect can be particularly helpful when flying from wet or contaminated runways, where any extra bit of lift can make a difference. The reduced drag also improves fuel efficiency during these initial moments after liftoff. Now in all fairness, it isn't much, but every little helps. Now here comes the flip side. Now because ground effect makes the aircraft fly more efficiently, it can create a false sense of performance. One of the biggest cons is premature liftoff. Especially in GA airplanes, a pilot might rotate at the correct angle of attack and feel the plane becoming airborne, but without actually reaching a safe climb speed. The aircraft may be flying, yes, but it's stuck in sort of an aerodynamic limbo, unable to climb out of the ground effect. Meaning on takeoff, this can negatively impact performance if the pilot rotates too early and lifts off at too low an airspeed. So the apparent lift is then increased in ground effect, so the aircraft may seem ready to fly, but once it climbs out of the ground effect, that extra lift disappears, induced drag increases, and the aircraft might struggle to maintain flight. And this can result in settling back onto the runway, or worse, a stall shortly after takeoff if there's not enough airspeed or power. So in short, taking off too early in ground effect can give a full sense of sufficient lift, leading to a dangerous loss of performance when the aircraft climbs out of the ground effect. The second major con appears on landing. As you approach the runway with a bit too much speed, ground effect can cause the aircraft to float 
just like our 747 at the beginning. Now that floating makes it difficult to judge the right moment to flare and touch down, and you might end up using significantly more runway than expected. This effect is exaggerated in long body aircraft like the Airbus A340 or the lady here in the background. Its massive wings generate an enormous ground cushion, which means it can float longer than smaller aircraft. Now, at busy airports where every meter counts, this can be a real operational challenge. So let's break it down. The pros of ground effect are increased lift close to the ground, reduced induced drag, shorter takeoff distances, improved initial fuel efficiency, slightly, let's put it that way. <laughs> The cons of the ground effect are premature liftoff without sufficient climb performance, risk of floating during landing, especially at higher speeds, misleading cues for inexperienced pilots, and potential runway overruns. So how does this apply to the Boeing 747? When properly managed, the ground effect can actually assist 747 pilots in executing smooth touchdowns. The aircraft's design and weight make it prone to long, stable approaches, and ground effect provides a cushion that, when anticipated correctly, helps reduce vertical speed at touchdown. However, if the approach speed is too high, or if the pilot flares too early, the 747 can enter an extended float risking a runway overrun. That's why many 747 landings you see can be or seem like they are deliberately firm, so pilots aim to touch down solidly to avoid prolonged floating. But here's something even more fascinating. While most aircraft simply experience ground effect briefly during takeoff or landing, there are some that are specifically designed to fly in ground effect for extended periods. One such example is the Soviet-era Ekranoplan, often referred to as a wing-in-ground-effect vehicle. Now, the Ekranoplan was a hybrid between an aircraft and a boat, designed to fly just meters above the water at high speeds. Because it stayed in permanent ground effect, it experienced significantly reduced drag, which meant you could carry heavy loads over long distances at speeds far greater than boats. The Soviet military saw strategic advantages in it, deploying it across the Caspian Sea, also known the, as the Caspian Sea Monster. Sadly, only one of them made it into service. And today, the concept is making a modern comeback. The English Channel operators are considering the use of ground effect vehicles to fly just above the water from the UK to France. Now, these vehicles promise to be much faster than traditional ferries or hovercrafts, and most definitely more fuel efficient than airplanes at cruise altitudes, and potentially offer a new form of eco-friendly transport. I am looking forward to see that coming, because I travel to the UK a lot. <laughs> By harnessing the reduced drag and increased lift of ground effect, this futuristic form of travel could transform how we view short distance international journeys. And as promised, a tragic but insightful accident involving ground effect. In 1993, a Boeing 747 operated by China Airlines attempted to land at Hong Kong's famous Kai Tak Airport, known for its short runway and dramatic final approach. There's actually a video of me landing at Kai Tak with an Airbus 8020 simulator. Click the link right here to check it out. Nevertheless, the aircraft approached too fast and entered ground effect while still carrying excess speed. The result? The aircraft floated, touched down long and overran the runway. It plowed into the harbour, getting severely damaged. Thankfully, most passengers survived, but the aircraft was lost. The investigation revealed that ground effect, among many other factors, contributed to the overrun by delaying touchdown. But again, the root cause was indeed the phenomenon itself, it was the pilot's approach speed and the delayed decision making. So what's the lesson learned here? Ground effect is a powerful aerodynamic force. If you feel your plane just doesn't want to land, mark my words, a go around is always the safest option. It can be your ally if understood and anticipated, or your foe if underestimated. Whether you're flying a Cessna 172 or a Boeing 747, or even a futuristic cross-channel hovercraft, recognizing the subtle ways the ground changes the rule of flight is critical. 
And here's a great question from the ATPLQ database. Which aircraft design would be the most sensitive to changes in airflow patterns when entering the ground effect? Pause the video to read the answer possibilities and see if you are correct. In three, two, one, go. So the correct answer is B, the low wing aircraft with a low mounted tailplane. It makes sense, right? Because such a design will be entering the ground effect a little earlier than a high wing aircraft. If you still need an ATPLQ subscription to prepare yourself for an upcoming ATPL exam, use the link in the description box. Better start practicing now before it's too late. Just saying. So the next time you watch a heavy airliner floating gently over the runway, remember, it's not just pilot skill or machine capability, it's physics. Physics we must respect. That's it for today. If you have some other aviation related questions, please be sure to check out my other videos or ask in the comment section below for the chance to have your question answered in a future video. And on that bombshell, here is your checklist today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, join our Patreon community, check, and don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.